Laiha, and the best way to describe myself is I'm a rewired individual, and it all basically means my work-life balance is extremely good. My work revolves around my holidays. Welcome and thank you all for attending. This is a very exciting day for us. Uh, today we launch our global research thought leadership work, Talented Southeast Asia. My name is Karen Karras. I am the CEO, global CEO and co-founder of Page Out People and also the co-author of this book. The contributors to this book work in organisations whose headquarters are domiciled all over the world. Their companies are spearheading growth here in the region and they're dealing with the regional issues of talent scarcity, development, engagement and retention every day. Page Up People has a long track record of innovation and best practice in talent management technologies. And if we all truly believe, and I'm sure we all do, that Asia will lead the way for growth for businesses across the world, the question is who is going to lead your business to grow in Asia? Is it going to be the continued model of the expatriate from North America, from Europe, from other parts of the developed world into the region? Or at the same time, are we going to look at who are we grooming in this part of the world? Talent management is not an invention of HR. It's a critical business issue. I don't know of another topic that invokes more anxiety in the HR community and frustration in business leaders than performance management. The biggest construction site on earth is the workplace. Technological uh, advantages are uh, short-lived and it's really about creativity and ideas and innovation. It doesn't matter which industry it is. Um, so, and that's still people business. I adhere to something called the service profit chain. It's uh, pioneered by a guy called Meister, David Meister and Jim Haskett. And it's a very simple formula. And they say the right and happy people that make the appropriate product, build strong client, uh, strong client relationships, advocacy for the company, and therefore attract new clients and talent, and that accumulates into a financial result. And I think it all starts with the people. And it's leadership that's not in-country leadership, but it's leadership that actually goes across borders. Leadership that, um, I'll say, encompasses the different cultures and understanding how you can actually be effective in a different culture and yet achieving the same objectives. What is collaboration within Maybank? Um, it is no longer that this, is, this resource belongs to me, but it belongs to the bank. Okay, and we're talking about a, a matrix organization, which, you know, it's, it's really a new way of working. There's so many new behaviors that people need to learn. So I've always been um, an Asia Pacific, Southeast Asia uh, file, or I've, I've been, you know, I've had uh, experience uh, managing uh, HR in uh, Southeast Asia and uh, Asia Pacific with various companies. So this is really a, a topic that's very close to my heart. So that's why when, uh, when Sylvia and Karen asked me to contribute to the book, um, I dropped all my work and actually started uh, composing uh, my thoughts. Uh, the talk of the town in HR circles, uh, we started to use them uh, in the Southeast Asia, Asia Pacific uh, region, trying to bring all the different regional managers uh, for talent reviews. And we would always tell the line people that, uh, look guys, you know, if you spend days and days on, on budget reviews, why don't you even spend half a day on a talent review? Initially, they found talent reviews as uh, another uh, HR uh, um, conspiracy, right, to, to move people around. But over time, they realized the business value of actually spending time, investing time on, on, on talent. We see power and energy as uh, as a key element in uh, driving the Philippines uh, growth and industrialization. Okay. And we've gone global. We've, we're now also in Nigeria and we're trying to help that uh, 
country as well. So we needed to drive active leadership. So managers who walk the talk, managers who are on the floor and in the field, meeting with the people, engaging the pe people through communication. And the key element of that program is feedback. Feedback is a gift. You have to give motivational feedback and developmental feedback. Motivational feedback to build confidence, developmental feedback to build competence. Our global chairman, um, Dr. Frank Apple, said this, HR is the most, in his words, under-leveraged lever of all. Yet HR is contributing a lot. We need to invest more in HR. HR IT systems, recruiting for diversity, HR shared services. We need to invest more in our HR people. Whether you're seeing in the region here significant shifts in organisations taking the opportunity to use technology and different work practices to get work done. In Indonesia, which are traditionally quite conservative, are now offering a lot of flexi part-time arrangements for staff. Uh, we're also seeing that with the emergence of Gen Y, so younger employees, there's quite a demand for flexibility. Definitely we're seeing a lot of movement in the uh, shared service space. Uh, of course, it could be finance, IT, HR, um, and think, rethinking the whole target operating model about how do you organize shared service. By the end of the day, it is the outcome and the quality of work that counts. When you provide employees the opportunity and the autonomy to choose where they work and how they work, the productivity goes up. There's plenty of research showing that. What some of the, I guess, the critical success factors need to be for best-in-class HR practitioners of the future? One story we've got, for example, from a uh, best employer in Malaysia, uh, which was um, Intel, um, they deliberately put business people into the HR function. So they train um, engineers typically in HR to rotate through HR so that they're trying to give credibility to the HR function through showing that they actually understand the business. Now, a key element of that is capability. When you look at the recruitment strategy for HR and the direction of HR in the future, not a lot have background in statistics or analytics, right? You're beginning to see a lot of that changing now. You're seeing some of the universities offering analytics programs. I think we're going towards a trend where people in the human resource space will definitely need to have spent a few years in the business organization context to really have had business operation roles. It adds value. It gives you credibility. Social relatedness and social connectivity is the biggest driver for performance. And with all the techno technology we have today, it is possible to really grow strong foundations for that in organization and improve engagement and performance. And we're talking about some of the complexities of performance management. And you would all know about uh, performance workflows and approvals and 17 step this is and 48 form versions of that. I mean, what's the WhatsApp for performance management? How can it be this easy? Um, and so that's sort of the types of things we're trying to do is to change the game completely come up with the WhatsApp for HR talent, something that works, it's universal, it's social, it's easy, it's enabling, it's fun, it's engaging and um, solves all of these wonderful problems. Uh, use a very clear sort of flow technique where we can bring these ideas that you have in your companies into the development process and into our engineering to create the WhatsApp technology of HR and talent management tomorrow. My reality is a world where organizations and talent or people are faced with an ever-expanding universe of choices. If you choose to, to continue with the metaphor of war for talent, um, you're choosing to put yourself um, in conflict with the world. And I believe that uh, in a war with the world, the odds are fairly heavily stacked in favor of the world winning. But in our new reality, a universe of choice, the demands, as I say, are far greater. Um, it requires uh, truly understanding of your own value proposition. What is it that attracts people to your company? What is it that creates value for them where they want to stay with your company? War has got nothing to do with that. What it requires of HR is ingenuity. It requires innovation. It requires insight. 
It requires persistence, determination, professionalism, pragmatism, responsiveness, proactivity. In short, it's not easy. Our job is not to be concerned with what other companies do. Our job is to look at what is it that makes this company a great place to work. We believe that great people want and will choose to work with great companies. So, I would say the war for talent was a phony war. Let's see about meeting the needs of great people to work with a great company. The Thank ferocious you. battle for the hearts and minds of our employees, for their engagement against competitors who want them becomes paramount. And so what I'd like to do, do today is to talk about three key conditions that exist for a war being present and a war being continuing and show you that those three conditions not only exist in the war for talent, but actually that things are going to get worse. If people aren't worth fighting for and people aren't worth conducting a war, then what is in our field? I think we in Asia know exactly what happens here, right? We compete from the day we were born, right, to get the best entrance scores to get into the best primary schools, to get the best marks to go to the best secondary schools, to get the best marks to go to the best universities, to get the best marks to get the best jobs, the best money, marry the best husbands and wives and have the best life. In a world where talent is the main thing, perhaps the only thing, in a world where talent is becoming more, is scarce and becoming scarcer, in a world where combatants won't simply lay down their arms on the count of three and go away, and in a world for the very subject matter we're fighting over, the best talent actually want a war, and it's in their interest to have a war. I'm afraid the war for talent not only rages, it's only going to get worse. Thank you. Some of you have flown in from overseas destinations, uh, so I really appreciate the huge amount of effort that you've all put into coming and sharing this uh, wonderful occasion with us. There is. Uh, really exciting practices that are being born in this region because of the unique attributes in this region. And I do wholeheartedly believe that some of those uh, new practices that are being designed here will become global practices that are adopted elsewhere around the world. Thank you very much for your kind, uh, kind presence here today. Thank you.